If I was going to teach the benefits of a full-blown video editor, it would go something like this, and that's why I'm going to focus on keyframe animation and the particular art of using interpolation. Interpolation. And there are six things on the left-hand side. I'm going to demonstrate them because I did release a little public meaningless video yesterday because there was no explanation. So um, just as an idea, in a quite a thorough way, the term interpolation means inserting something into something else with a different nature. So for an example, in mathematics, the insertion of an intermediate value or term into a series by estimating or calculating it from surrounding known values. Now, I can show this as a demonstration really, really easy. And in animation, and in a second or two, I will do a couple of real life examples by referring to a landscape which looks like this. And so this is the version that you'll see and you'll probably think nothing of it whatsoever. But when you actually get down to it, it's worth knowing the tools in your bag. So it goes something like this. In the video that I made yesterday, what actually happens if I play it? And you'll find after two seconds, these yellow dots start to move to the right hand side of the screen, but they do so with different natures. In other words, different timing, different speed. That can be a likened, and this is why I'm doing it this way, to um, if you climb some stairs, literally, if you go up three or four treads, you probably get there, you know, as fast as you can, you might run up. But if the stairs get larger and larger, you may wish to go and take a view or to rest at a particular point in time. That's why a good example on that graphic says challenge, and that is that we never do things, even going up or down with this child up and down the stairs at different rates. There's different motivations because some stairs might be as this one going to the sky. So, so we're not talking about stairs, are we? One good example is going down something. And this is what I mean about the way we travel from A to B. This slide here in the center looks like it's concrete and it looks like it's linear. In other words, the faster you go or the longer you go, the faster you're gonna hit the bottom. Big problem for safety in that way. So therefore, you find that with this one in the middle, with a water chute, it goes down, it's got a flat bit, it drops, and then the end of it for safety with children, adults alike, there is a big flat part where you're going to become hopefully safe at the bottom. Because if you hit the bottom extremely fast, you know, we're going to have problems. So what I'm talking about is in motion. So if we go back to um, the example here, and I'm just going to play the sequence. So two seconds go by and I'm just going to turn the music on a second. Now you can see straight away here that the um, one of them, which is probably a simple linear test, and that is this yellow dot here at the top will be traveling from the left to right in a linear pattern. It's similar ways if we're climbing stairs, left, right, left, right, we get to the end. A fast and slow are opposites. A smooth and a sharp are interesting to me in terms of videography. And the hold does nothing apart from stay, 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 and flick over to the end after the, the duration. So let me just go back a, a minute again. So here we go. So we, we start off, and you can see that sharp is going quite well into the race, shall we say. And then it gets to the middle, which is about roughly where my mouse pointer is, and it will kind of like hang around and it will stop. But you can see that slow has overtaken it, but linear is nowhere near the middle. And then they go near the end, near the end, near the end, and then, believe it or not, they're all going to arrive at the same time, done, at the end. So what does that actually mean in terms of video editing? Let's get rid of that. And let's go down to have a look of how it is working because we've been here for a few minutes and I'm trying to be as thorough as I can. Here we go. So what happens in the 
Sony Vegas is what I'm using and I'm going to tell people because I don't normally go on about it and that is that I've used Sony Vegas, it's not Sony anymore, it's Magic's Vegas. Magic is the company that overtook Vegas, so it's Vegas Movie Studio Platinum 15 is the version that I use. It is a phenomenal editor. There's a lot of name drops going around here with things like Final Cut, Premiere, things like that. You don't hear of the Lightworks, you don't hear of the the Vegases or the um, Power Directors too much. Not with those sorts of people who talk about it, but as far as I'm concerned, I've chosen something. It's pretty cool, pretty excellent. I don't use it so much, but it's there in the bag. What you're seeing on screen now is an update which literally came through this morning. Say it's Vegas Movie Studio 15, Update 2. And it lists all the new features and it really, really is taking something from almost like if you can think an off the shelf solution for anything, quite honestly. And I'm using uh, dinner trays, plastic dinner trays as, a, as an idea. Don't want that one is to go through and say to ourselves, that if you went to quite honestly, a school dinner, you might have a plastic tray with a hole for your knives and forks to eat from, maybe a banana, a drink a dessert and a main meal. That is like visit video editing off the shelf, sometimes in an app or even with things that you cannot honestly control. There are compartments, you cannot move it, you can take it or leave it, you must sit with the system. That's plastic ones. But if you want to say, take the analogy, almost the, you know, the metaphor of dining and dinner trays, then we can come along and say that if you've got an open tray that you can compose however you wish it to be, even though it's like, I don't know, 18th century Lady Jane's uh, stuff, that the one that I want to scroll down to is the one where they start talking about cheese plates. In other words, you've got a complete blank canvas to do as you wish. And we can see that you can start off to get, uh, not on a cheese plate, but you can get this quite elaborate picture frame type tray and you can start to build it to create something quite nice. And then I was starting to get um, hungry a little bit here because I'm trying to do the analogy of simplistic things versus, versus a complete blank canvas. This time they've used a huge piece of um, anti-pasty tray and they have put it up with meats and cheeses and grapes and it's starting to make me quite hungry. I want you to think about video editing in that way because if you come up and you start to look at things like the classic uh, perfect cheese plate, it's blank, you can make it look phenomenal. If you think you go back to this other one up here of the, which is lovely, an eight compartment food tray for Thai food, but you've got to sit within those compartments. Of course, yeah, it's good because the food might slop around on an open tray in that way. So what I'm getting to is that in a full-blown, and I say semi-full-blown editor here, this is Movie Studio 15 Platinum, not Movie Studio 15 Pro, or Pro rather, we get to each yellow dot. So if you think of linear to demonstrate, I can click on this idea here on the event pan and crop, you've not seen anything like this before then opens up a video effects and on this video effects here's my or our yellow dot look at the top here where I'm showing and on the right hand side we've got the keyframe animation so at that point I want that yellow dot to be here on the left and ending on the right hand side I want it to be on the top right exactly where it should be and the way that it literally passes like some steps or like um, the flume ride is by right clicking I've got linear, fast, slow, smooth, sharp and hold. That is the way it gets across that canvas. So linear is okay but if you think in real life, and this is what I'm going to demonstrate in a second uh, with the, the landscape here, is how that works in practice because showing you a load of old yellow dots is quite meaningless unless you are a real diehard person to want to sit here and learn. And I hope you are because that's what the sort of person I really want to attract to my teaching and my channel here on YouTube. And that is that if we keep going, we have got, and I did this uh, yesterday for um, a video to do with um, something I was demonstrating, and I thought this is lovely to show the pan on a sharp. Um, one of the last ones I did to do with the I don't know, on the last one on the channel, it's a, it's a, it's an open landscape thing with some trees. So look, this is something that I want to go to next, and that is to apply.
apply this to a real life picture. So what we can see here if I play the sequence is that we're starting off with a picture and that picture if I want to, to look at it and it could be a video, in this case it is a picture, it's a landscape looking out on a nature bird hide so let me just, just get it as nice and big um, and that is that the the panorama looks like this. So you look out from this wooden bird hide, you can see the birds sat down here, you've got trees to the left, an open sky, and then some trees and the wood frame of the bird hide on the right. And what's going to happen on the um, keyframe is that on the left hand side it's going to sit as is, which is there on the left, and then on the right hand side it's going to finish up on the right. I just need to come back one keyframe and it sits like that. So let's have a look at how it actually moves and more importantly how is it going to move and it's going to move as a sharp. Um, I will show you what I mean. So if we hit that and then we play it, it starts to move quite quickly, it gets to the middle and it almost starts to gaze and it doesn't move and near the end it moves again. So in the centre part here where I've just put it that means that what I've done is I've moved quickly through. If I could take the scrap bar here, I've moved quickly through, I've gone slow, and then I've quickly gone to the end. If I wished to change this exactly, and then I wanted to try out different versions, if I wanted to go on, say, for a linear instead, then what would happen is it would look like this, it would just move at an exacting same rate, left, right, left, right, up the stairs, if we want to use that analogy again, and then it stops. Of course, this is a video playback, and I'm using my CPU, so it's not as smooth as would like. So what we've got on the final example before we finish here is another one, and this is slightly different in that it's the same scene, but a different one of my images. And what I've actually done is I've started to play around with the applied sense that you'd probably use in video editing. So in other words, there is the scene again, and I've started uh, almost like in the infamous or famous Ken Burns way to say that I've started to zoom in, and as I go through the keyframe, I'm going to pull this out, pull this out, the dotted line is the visible area, and I'm going to end up right over the right-hand side here as a zoomed out idea which will look like, let's bring it over to the right, a widescreen version of the whole landscape. So in practice, if this does actually play, it'll probably be a bit jumpy because of my recording the screen at the same time. So we're zoomed in there, start to play, start to play, it starts to reveal itself, keeps coming out, keeps coming out with a bit of a pan and zoom, keeps coming, keeps coming. Now no, notice that it's stopped moving there, that's intentional, and then it comes out to finish up there at the widescreen, which is more or less like that. Now just to remind ourselves, how did we make the animation move? The way we made it move was, just by double checking, it's on a sharp, which was the one which actually comes along, and I can just demonstrate as a final thing here, because once again I've been here for 13 minutes, but if you can spend and invest that time and think about video editing in the, you know, a good way, then you can start to learn a lot. So in other words, let's just bring up, uh, yeah, that, that would do to finish it. So in other words, the linear, if I likened it to falling down the water slide, is literally A to B in a straight line, linear um, motion. The fast one, literally, drops quickly and goes slower, a bit like that water fl flume, you drop down, I can't make it any bigger on screen, sorry, and then the slow means it's not much happening, not much happening, and then, then drops off quickly, a bit like a slippery slope argument, a smooth, it goes not much at the start, it drops a bit and then it smooths itself out for a safe landing, the sharp drops off quickly, smooths out in the middle with not much happening and then speeds up near the end and a hold of course does absolutely nothing it's like magic where it will go from one position blink of an eye to the next so that pretty much was interpolation with advanced video editing and i would actually say that if you can because i've got to look at all things here with myself particularly and that is to say that for me personally that 
I might do the odd Vegas movie studio 15, I might not, because I'd just rather to get out and look at the world and make videos to help people learn. And for me, I make videos that are almost like intelligent briefings like this, although this has gone on for 15 minutes, if you're still here, rather than actually a feature film or a video documentary. That is not to say that I do not want to make those sorts of things on YouTube or anywhere else for that matter. It's just that the way to get ideas out is pretty quick. So this one was interpolation, which was an aspect, of course, of using video editing to come away from the off the shelf plastic tray idea to really come out to something that is a complete blank canvas to custom make it almost like a musical score, which let's be honest, the timeline of video editing is exactly that. It's a blank canvas that you wish to paint uh, with visuals, with audio, with beats, with rhythm, with style, if you like. 